Marilyn Voss Savant is an American columnist and author who, from 1985 to 1989, was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the highest recorded IQ. In 1990, she was working for the magazine Parade when she received this question from a reader. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the other two are goats. You pick a door, say door one, and the host, who knows what's behind all the doors, opens another door, say door three, which has a goat behind it. He says to you, do you want to change your mind and pick door two instead? The question is, is it to your advantage to switch your choice of doors? Voss Savant answered, The selection should be switched to door two because it has a two-thirds chance of success, while door one has just one-third. After she gave her answer, Parade was flooded with letters from readers, including the thousand or so who had PhDs. Most thought Voss Savant was wrong. The problem became known as the Monty Hall problem because it resembled scenarios in the game show Let's Make a Deal, hosted by Monty Hall. Actually, it had first been stated and solved in a letter by Steve Selvin to the journal American Statistician in 1975, but it only became well known because of Voss Savant's fame and her controversial response. The New York Times made it a front page story and a huge debate began. Let's take a close look at the problem. Most people think that nothing changes after the host reveals a goat behind one of the doors. There are now two unopened doors with a goat behind one and a car behind the other. So it's commonly assumed there's a 50-50 chance of getting the car whether you stick with your original choice or change. But strange as it may seem, that's not correct. Let's start by using plain and simple logic. We want to win the car and we have two options. The first is, whatever door we choose initially, we stick with. This gives us, at the start of the show, a 1 in 3 chance of winning the car, no matter what choice the host offers after one of the doors is opened. The second option is, after the host opens a door and reveals a goat, we change our selection to the other remaining unopened door. This in fact increases our chances of winning to two out of three. Why? The key is that the host who knows what's behind all the doors must open a door with a goat behind it. This changes everything. If we initially chose a door with a goat behind it, the host is forced to open the door that has the other goat behind it. He can't open the door behind which he knows is the car. That's the crucial point. In order to increase our chances of winning, if we chose the wrong door at the beginning, then, when given the option, we need to switch our choice to the other unopened door. There's only one winning door and two losing ones, so the probability of choosing the correct door is one-third, whereas the probability of choosing the wrong door is two-thirds. That's our chance to win the car if we change our choice of door. Let's now do a simulation of the show to make this more clear.
as you can see from this, if we change doors, our chance of winning the car increases. Finally, let's solve the problem by direct calculation. In order to do this, we need to consider all the possibilities. At the outset, the car can be behind the first, second or third doors, and the probability is equal for all the doors, namely one third. The show begins and the host asks us which door we want to choose. Let's look at the probabilities involved in our choice. The car is behind one of the doors, and no matter whether we choose to open the first, second or third, the probability of us getting it right and winning is the same, one third. What if we decide to switch our choice to the other unopened door? If we follow the first probability path, the host can open either door 2 or 3. There's a 50-50 chance. For the second path, the host has to open door 3, because there's a car behind door 1 and he can't reveal that. So for the third door, there's a 100% chance. Similarly, for the third path, the host can open only door 2, and the chance is again 100%. For the first path, if we chose door 1, the host opens door 2 and asks if we want to stick with the first door. We opt to change to switch our choice to the third door. There's no other option, therefore the chance to select the third door is 100%. Now we have all the possibilities. If we switch doors, we can see in what situations we win or lose. There are six probabilities of 1 over 9 that we win the car. 6 over 9 is 2 over 3, or 66 and 2 thirds percent. In the same way, we can calculate the probability of picking a door that has a goat behind it. There are six ways of it being the goat, each with a probability of 1 over 18 giving a total probability of 1 over 3, or 33 and a third percent. So we can solve the Monty Hall problem by logic, simulation or calculation, and the answer remains the same. Needless to say, after it became clear that Voss Savant was right, she got a lot of apology letters. The kind of probability we've been talking about here is called conditional probability. The condition in the Monty Hall problem is that the host knows what there is behind all the doors and always opens a door behind which there's a goat. You might say that, as in life, in conditional probability, small effects can have big consequences.